What's up guys and dolls, welcome to The Good, The Bad and The Stupid, it's Monday the 21st of September. A great weekend had by all, I hope. Um, goes quick doesn't it? You don't get time to fucking do much. It's all like, it's a blur usually, you're normally finishing work on a Friday, next thing you know, you're back at work on Monday and you spent another few hours ironing your clothes and getting your shit together, sandwiches made and... Fucking nightmare. There ain't much left. You don't realise. There's very little. And if you commute as well to work, if you're commuting to London or somewhere, doing an hour each side of your job, you've got nothing left to yourself. I'll tell you what, we need to just give it all up. Well, this lockdown, which we're having, we're having a big lockdown coming soon again. And everybody's going to get to work from home again. Everyone's going to be able to go, yay, we're going to have to work from home or pretend to work from home. Um, but that's the, the, the best thing about what's happened during this. I mean, obviously it's no good having the, uh, the virus, but every cloud, if you get to work from home and you get to fuck off all that shit, don't have to iron your clothes. You can sit around in what you want. Don't have to make sandwiches and let them go all sloppy by lunchtime and you just look at them and go, oh, you know what, I ain't even eating that. I'm going to go and buy something from fucking the shops anyway. So you end up having double, sorry, paying double and chucking your shit, shit sandwiches away. Otherwise, you're just miserable if you eat them. Yeah, so uh, anyway, that's what I've been working from home today, but I do that most days, so that's by choice. I haven't hurt a lot, though. Some of you who were complaining about that and who do go to work, you're probably earning a lot more money than me because although I sound very professional and this sounds like the fucking... It should be top of the pops when it comes to fucking the podcast charts. No one's ever heard of me. No one's even heard of me. Not even in my own country, not even in my own city, not even in my own fucking house. <laughs> I have heard of me in my own house, but in my own street, nobody knows who I am. I'm incognito. Um, anyway, moving on. I'll tell you what, the, uh, some migrants had a bit of, uh, a bit of an eye-opener when they landed on... All the migrants want to come to England, don't they? Well, mainly because they all speak English, I guess. That's the curse of spreading the English language around the world, if you want to call it that. Because, um, you know, it doesn't bother me. Any bloke who fucking jumps on a boat, who travels across continents after continents and then fucking risks his life, you know, can't swim and risks his life in a boat that don't, don't float to get across for, to make a better life for themselves, fucking let him in as far as I'm concerned. Let's fuck off some of these people in this country that don't fucking, uh, don't, you know, don't give anything to the country or just a waste of space. Uh, well, you know, I think uh, what I'm trying to say is that the migrants that are trying to get here, you know, you got to. I would do it if I was in that position. But the ones who did come on this boat over the weekend, they had a right eye opener because they were they landed on a nudist beach, and they landed on the nudist beach, and they had loads of like nudes ran down to the uh, to the seafront to meet them, and I bet they thought they landed on some fuck. Well, we got the. We've got the, uh, what's it called? The compass right. So we've got the fucking directions right. We've landed on some weird um, tribal island with a load of pale tribes people all running down, just haven't got their spears. They're just carrying a baguette because they give them some sandwiches and that. They're carrying a baguette. Baguettes for spear, uh, spears and uh, bottles of water. They must have had a right shock. I bet they thought, hang on a minute, they're going to try and fuck us. <laughs> They're going to try and have their way with us. Let's fucking get the boat back. Pump the boat back up. Because that's what you've got to do when you land. If you are a migrant and you're listening from the France-Calais side, when you get here, burst your boat so they can't push you back out on the boat. Obviously, if you land on fucking nudist beach and they are trying to fuck you, at least wait and see before you do burst it. But you know, you know, if you don't burst your boat, they might be able to push you back out to sea and you can't stay. But anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, nudist beach, I don't know what beach it was, but there are nudist beaches in England, so beware. There are nudist, there's nud some guys just don't even be bothered with the beach. There's a, there's a nudist beach near me actually, down, down Brighton, I've never, seen, I've never been down there. I've, uh, I've kept my distance because I think you're meant to take your clothes off to even go on it. <laughs> so I, I, I thought I'd like to go for a little nose, but they've got it like, they've got it so that you can't look, you can't see unless you're on the beach. And if you're on the beach without your clothes on, because it's a pebble beach, they'll fucking start stoning you. They won't like it. You can't get walk, walking around with your clothes on while somebody's like stood in the sea with a fishing line tied to his dick, fishing for fucking mackerel. He ain't going to have it. He's going to be coming chase you off the beach. 
You just think you're taking photos of them or something, you see. But uh, then anyway, there's a guy here who's uh, he, he's obviously inland. He's probably like, and he's w walking around some uh, bushes. Oh, he's down in Brighton as well. He's on the downs, so he's not far from the sea, but he's on the downs, which is like the hills nearby. But it's way away. I mean, you shouldn't be walking around there nude anyway. But he's got a bag on. <laughs> he's got a cap on. A bag on his back. You know, he carry a rucksack. He's carrying his rucksack, but apart from that, he's only coat over his arm, just like any normal rambler. But we fuck all else on. <laughs> so he's like, uh, it might be water divining, you know, when you got that thing that water divines, and like, you got the thing that points up and down, mate, because he's going left and right, they said, running in and out of bushes as people came around the corners. Well, there's fucking hundreds of people walking up there. Of course, you're going to see people. He's obviously like, you know. I, I, that's what I said, he's water divining because I reckon it's turning him on. As soon as he sees people, he gets an hard on and does a right turn and, and runs off that way. When he dies down a bit, he sees some other people, gets another one and then runs off in another direction. It's a little game, isn't it? <laughs> but if you're a woman and you're walking and you do, you know what I mean? He's going to scare the shit out of a woman. I don't care for I, I don't know that bothered myself. Do what he want because I'll just kick him straight in his fucking... Uh, you know, he's almost highlighting where to kick him. But a woman then going to... She's going to find that quite upsetting, unless she's there for the same reason. It might be a dogging spot. I don't know. <laughs> I've stumbled upon dogging spots, and then uh, you know, you get out of there pretty quick before you become the doggy or the dogger. Or the, the doggy, I guess that's what you would call it. Or the un unplanned. Uh, Amazon's come up with a good idea. If you're going to get burgled, I'm saying that, then fucking the shit don't work. The shit don't work. What's that thing called? Alexa. Alexa don't work. I was trying to get Radio 6 on my friend's one the other day. We was both trying it. It's like trying to fucking talk to a parrot. Trying to get a parrot to talk. And you're just going, play Radio 6. And he's going... And he just repeats something that's not what you've said. And does something completely different. So we both kept trying to say it in like, you know, slow your voice down and whatever. It didn't fucking play. It couldn't get it on there. It didn't work. It's bust. So, uh, you know, it works for a while, but now that Amazon have created something else. Um, is Amazon Alexa? Or is that Apple? I don't know. But uh, this one's Amazon. And they're going to make people, burglars, when, when burglars are coming in, bollocks, excuse me, there's something going wrong with the screen. When burglars are coming in, they're going to make the sound as if people are in the house, as if people are pottering around and stuff. So when the burglars think, oh shit, somebody's in. Which is good, but they've just told us that they're making it so now it's like it, they can assume that, mate. But obviously, you're still going to be scared because you're going to be nervous, aren't you? But some of them seasoned burglars, they'll fucking burgle it whether you're in or not. They they don't care, but at the same time, uh, they'll they might just try it and then go out and then they'll come back again and see if it plays the same noise. What you need is a fucking dog sound that, like, you know, that old, like. Didn't they have it in Police Academy or something? All them old 80s films when you had the sound of dogs running to the door. I was, like my granddad had a picture of a Dobermans. He had Dobermans, but he had the pictures of the Dobermans long after the Dobermans had died. <laughs> he had the Dobermans in the window. We live here. Perfect. You know, people think, well, they might do. I think fucking, I ain't going to take my chances. I'd rather keep me bollocks, thanks. I'm not a fucking nude burglar, and I think the Doberman could take me fucking trousers off and me bollocks all in one go. <laughs> so... I don't think I'm going to take. I'm going to move on to something a little bit more because uh, they'll assume if you got a Doberman that you're fucking quite a Doberman kind of character yourself. You ain't going to get some little old lady with a Doberman. Although my nan, my, my granddad was with my nan, but but the Doberman wasn't for her because he'd knock her off her feet. <laughs> he'd run to run to the door anyway and knock her flying out out the fucking out the room, almost out the window one time. So yeah, but it's good though. I think mean, it's a good idea. You had some dirty Harry ones, whatever, gun sounding. <coughs> right, get the fuck out, you little shit, or I'm going to kill you. These ones, little, uh, what's it called? Squ Revenge of the Squirrels, this is called, this little one, because uh, a workman ran over a squirrel, and they all, all his buddies, his gang of squirrel mates, all chased after the van and started fucking smashing his van up, <laughs> ripping, his, uh, ripping his window wipers off and everything. That's good, isn't it? That's like, you know, band. They, they realised they got some. You know, that was might have been their best friend. They might have been their leader, and they ain't having it. And they've just gone and started like tri uh, smashing his van. So uh, it just goes to show that they have, do have feelings. 
and they're uh, and they're, and they're probably fucking good job he was in his van. They might have started taking his eyes out and burying them for the winter. You know, like a conquer when they take all the conquers. It's about that time now, isn't it? When they're about to start saving their stuff up for winter. Shit, being a squirrel because you just got to piss off. You got to hibernate for months, ain't you? You, got, you? you need to be a squirrel that can handle the cold. That you can just be out and about all year round. You don't want to be. You got fur on for God's sake. You don't need to really hibernate. You need to just like grow some little squirrel balls and hang about and just like think. You know, and just go sleep of an evening. Can you imagine if humans did that? Just hibernated. You would get burgled. You'd be fucked. All, all it takes is a a burglar who, like who's uh, thinks. I and I been eighteen. This is like rich pickings. This is the time, you know, six months worth. Um, anyway, Dennis Nelson, what's his name? Uh, I haven't watched it yet, but Dennis Nelson, the serial killer, he's not a squirrel serial killer. Um, he's a uh, human serial killer. <laughs> he kills humans, is what I meant. He's a, I usually do a tenuous link, but I haven't got one to this one from the last story. But he's David Tennant's playing him as uh, the. the there's a serial killer in the series, and I've not seen it. But he looks good. He looks the part. He looks fucking just like him. The part was just made for him. It's almost like he was an actor just to play that part because he's the spitting image. And uh, But anyways, loads of people have complained. I mean, loads of people have rang up complaining about the programme. And they're complaining, not because he's a serial killer and all the goriness and all the, the shit that he's done. They're complaining because he's smoking too much in it. <laughs> These fucking points of view idiots smoke. He's smoking too much. People smoked in those days. People fucking people smoke now, but people smoke in the seventies. In the you used to smoke indoors, and so you know it was like people were always smoking. We didn't watch Peaky Blinders then, because that guy's got a fag in his hand every fucking five minutes. In that he puts one out and lights one up. Puts one out, lights one up. I don't think he smokes in real life either. The, what's his name? Cillian Murphy. So it must be a pisser to have to smoke all them fags just for the part. But they'll probably use fake fags, don't they? But uh, but this guy's doing it, and everyone's ringing up, going, "Ah, oh, he's he's going to encourage people to smoke." I doubt it. He's a serial killer. He's going to encourage people to fucking kill people as well. <laughs> I don't think so. They're going to get everyone's going to get hooked on fags again. It's like, oh, piss off. Just watch something else. Watch something that's like, you know, ticks all your boxes, which is basically something that's on in the middle of the daytime in the morning with Philip Schofield in which is really shit watch that and then there's nothing to complain about apart from Philip Schofield obviously dodgy dodgy dealer dodgy um, you know dodgy husband Philip Schofield has come out as gay after fucking 25 years of being with his wife nothing dodgy about that um, anyway uh, also a quick blast from a laser can boost a woman's sex drive it says here experts found painless Five minute zap, increase the libido and the number of orgasms. <laughs> I'd like to think that I can fucking get in there and deal with it myself, really. But apparently, you can uh, give them a little, you know, a little uh, sprucing up before you get in. I think by the looks of it. So if that's the case, I guess it's good. Whatever works. I mean, people use sex toys and that. I mean, don't look fucking too sexy. You're looking at it, it's on a, it's on wheels, and it's got a big long thing stick. It looks like something out of a fucking hospital. I don't know about like a sexy sex toy. At least sex toys look like cocks and look like fucking vaginas and whatever else. That just looks like something you'd wear at the side of a bed of somebody who's got kidney dialysis. <laughs> but whatever. It's like some kind of electric shock thing, I think, is it? CO2 laser. I oh, know CO2. But anyway... So uh, it worked with 50 older women compared regular hormonal cream with three laser sessions, which cost from a thousand pound. Oh, fuck you now. A thousand pound it costs. I'll tell you what, you're better off spending that money on a load of gigolos. They'll get you going. That's f and if they don't, they'll probably do it for free. They'll say it'll work and it otherwise you can have it for free. Better than fucking buying a thousand pound to some Harley Street bloody plastic surgeon. It's going to be as clinical as shit, isn't it? None of them are any good, a good looking. They're all fucking, you know, like a tattooist has got, is covered in tattoos. Then Marley Street blokes are probably, I was going to say, the Marley Street people are probably all uh, plastic surgery off it, all their faces and everything. But I bet they're not because they see what fucking damage they do to other people. I bet they don't get near it. I bet they don't have their own uh, medicine, so to speak. 
if I was a plastic surgeon, and I'd seen like some of the fucking other shows that have come out of the night, oh, I want you know these people are going, yeah, I want to look like David Beckham. There's a guy, he said he wants to look like David Beckham. He don't look nothing like him. He looks like Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> They've made him look like so. I'd want my money back. Luckily, he's that mad that he thinks he does. He's come out going, yeah, that's good. I look like, I look just like him. They must give him. They must hold a mirror up to him and have like a, a picture of David Beckham's face on the front of the mirror, and he goes, yeah, perfect, nice one, mate. Anyway, uh, my fucking ears are uh, getting on my nerves today. But it's all right. If you're listening on the podcast, there is a video version. So that's where my hair is messing me up because uh, it keeps falling in my eyes. Anyway, um, last one. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do another one. A brain wrapped in tin foil and paper with Chinese writing on it has been uh, was found by a horrif- horrified beach coma. So he's washed up on the beach, a, uh, a, a brain as with... Uh, I wonder if that... A human brain? Is it human? Well, it's a brain. I think the jury's out. But whether it's human... It's a strange thing to be washing around in the sea. Anyway, it looked like a jellyfish, I imagine. Because it's wrapped in tin foil and paper. Are you going to know who it is? <laughs> it's a proper full brain. You're going to have to check that out, aren't you? And just see, like... Imagine if you could tune into it, like, the way, you know, like, if you found a camera. That's the equivalent of finding a camera. In years to come, when they can read a brain, plug it in, and it starts telling you what's inside the brain. And that'd be like finding a washed-up camera and looking at all the photos. So, uh, you know, we could see them, whether it's a human's. They'd be able to tell whether it's a human's, otherwise, I think, it's definitely not going to be a chicken's, otherwise they'd have said, chicken brain's definitely a lot smaller than human. <laughs> so it's got to be human-sized... It's a human's. I'm going to assume it's a human's and it's Chinese. So it's a Chinese, guys. Anybody over there missing a brain, send a, um, get in touch with uh, the beach in Wisconsin. Oh, it's over in America. It's not even in England, but in Wisconsin. So it's washed its way around from China all the way around to Wisconsin in America. Uh, lost property. Send love to lost property. So if you're missing a brain anywhere in China, there you go. Check it out. Um, well, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you've uh, enjoyed it and uh, you're not that person who's missing the brain because uh, you probably would be suited very much to my podcast because it doesn't take much to find. Uh, you, won't, you won't need to be too intelligent to find anything that I say uh, of any worth. Right, I'm going to leave it and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it and I'll see you again uh, tomorrow. See you later. Bye.